morning and welcome to Living Waters Lutheran Church in Ringo's, New Jersey. I am Pastor JJ and I am happy to welcome to you to worship here today on our celebration of Palm Sunday. We're actually doing our Holy Week services a little different this year. We are breaking them up as a continued story, so there will be no dismissal at the end of service. The story will continue from our celebration here on Palm Sunday into Maundy Thursday. So I invite you to join us Thursday night at 7 p.m. and then also Friday night at 7 p.m. for our Good Friday service. This week, this special week for us, centers our church year and it's one of the striking contrasts. Jesus rides into Jerusalem, surrounded by shouts of glory, only to be left alone to die on the cross, abandoned by even his closest friends. Mark's Gospel presents Jesus in his complete human vulnerability, agitated, grieved, scared, forsaken. Though we lament Christ's suffering and all human suffering, we also expect God's salvation in the wine and bread. Jesus' promise is that his death will mark a new covenant with all people. We enter this holy week thirsty for the completion of God's astonishing work. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Yep. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus gave two disciples a task saying to them, go into the village over there. As soon as you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, its master needs it and he will send it back right away. They went and found a colt tied to a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some people standing around said to them, Why, what are you doing, untying the colt? They told him just what Jesus said, and they left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes upon it, and he sat on it. Many people spread out their clothes on the road while others spread branches cut from the field. Those in front of him and those following were shouting, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor, David. Hosanna in the highest.
Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, and wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. A reading from Philippians, the second chapter. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Good morning, welcome, come on into my shop, take a look. We've got a lot of different oils, different fragrances, different sizes as you can see. My family has been in the business of selling aromatics for generations. We've had this store for, oh, I can't even tell you how long. What are the oils used for? Well, lots of people use them for your skin, it makes it really, really nice and soft. Some people use the fragrances for their homes because you know living in a city ugh, it can get really really smelly we have some special oils i think this one is a special one the priests use this for their anointing and we even have some oils that are bombs that are used to bury the dead i can't believe how busy the city is getting nissen the month we're in right now is the busiest of all times in jerusalem especially around the middle of the month, you know, the 14th day, when the moon is full. That's when people start coming in from all over the countryside. They're going to come in for a religious holiday. In Hebrew, we call it Peshat, but in English, in your language, you call it Passover. This is one of the three festivals that people of the Jewish faith are required to observe. We all gather at this time and we retell our ancestral story. Years and years, centuries ago, we were enslaved in Egypt. We were enslaved for over 400 years. Life was really, really hard. But Yahweh, God, delivered us from this bondage. God spoke through the prophet Moses and his brother Aaron. They would go to Pharaoh and they asked that leader to let us go to free us so that we could go out into the wilderness and to worship Yahweh. Every time they went, Pharaoh said no. And afterwards, Yahweh would release a plague. And they kept getting worse because Pharaoh kept saying no. Until the 10th time, Pharaoh and Moses went and they asked them again. And Pharaoh said no. And then Moses told them that by saying no, you're bringing a curse on your people and that the death would come, the firstborn of every human and every animal would be killed. 
It was a frightening night. I can't even imagine. Everybody must have been just huddled in their homes, frightened. The Israelites, my people, were told to sacrifice a lamb, to paint the blood of the lamb over the doorposts of their home, and then during the night, the Spirit of God would come, and it would pass over any home that was marked with the blood of the lamb. That night, Pharaoh's oldest son died. Pharaoh was heartbroken, and he was furious at the Israelites. He couldn't take it anymore, and he told Moses and Aaron to take your people and go and leave. And so we were released. It's written in our sacred scrolls that the followers of Yahweh should remember this every year. So that's why you see people coming from all over. Jewish people would be making their pilgrimage to the temple to make their sacrifices. I go each year with my husband, but I can't go past the court of women. So I wait with the other wives while our husbands go up further past up there. You see that? That's called the Nicanor Gate. They go into the court of the Israelites with other men and they make their offering and their sacrifice. And then afterwards they bring the meat home and we gather together with all of our family members and we eat it together to remember that Passover meal. We eat it together and we tell the story. We tell our story. Jerusalem is normally busy, but during Passover celebration, it's insane. It is so crazy. There can be up to three or four times as many people in the city as there normally are. With that many people in and around looking for food and shelter and things that they need for Passover, it can get out of hand. Earlier today, a woman came into our shop and she purchased a bottle like this one. It's really special when she saw it, she knew she had to have it. It was interesting when she came in here because she wasn't Jewish. I think she was a Gentile, I'm pretty sure of it. She said that she needed the oil for her teacher. She said that she was a follower of Jesus. I've heard stories about this man. I've heard that wherever he goes, people follow. Big, big crowds follow. She told me that she was a follower of Jesus. And she said she thought that she had heard that Jesus would be here in Jerusalem for Passover. Maybe, maybe that's why there's so many people in the city now. Mm. I certainly hope there aren't any problems. In years past, when we've had so many people, there have been outbreaks and skirmishes. You know, like people yelling and fighting. Sometimes, sometimes there have even been riots. That's why the Roman guards are here. They're sent here during the Passover. You see them over there? Over there? You can even see them over there. They're standing guard. They station themselves so that they can have a clear view of everything that's happening in the city. They're even standing over there at the Antonia Fortress. That's the best place because they have a clear view of everything that's happening in the city and in a temple. They say they're here to keep the peace, but I don't know, I think they make people feel anxious. People feel like they're being watched. Sometimes when I'm walking around the city, I feel like I'm being watched too. I've heard rumors that they have spies everywhere, that they have ears and eyes watching for outbursts and insurrections. Speaking of, of outbursts, do you, do you hear that? Wait, look over there. You see all those people gathering? It seems like everybody is coming out, coming out of their shops and their homes to see something or someone. Wait, it looks, it looks like they're carrying and pulling down branches from trees and, and I see people taking off their cloaks and throwing it down. I wonder who it is. Wait, I, I can hear them. They're shouting something. I think, I think they're shouting Hosanna. Maybe, maybe it's a general or maybe it's the governor who came to town. You know, Pontius Pilate. Why? Why do you think Pontius Pilate's here? Well, you know, if people get out of hand, somebody has to render judgment. That's, that's probably why he's here. He's the ranking official who decides people's fates. 
I hear he's very, very powerful. He can set people free, or he can sentence people to death. Wow, there's just droves and droves of people. They just keep coming. It's really getting exciting. I see other people that are closing up their shops. I think I'm gonna do that too. I gotta see what's going on. Don't you wanna come too? Why don't you come with me? Let's go together. We raise our voices together, affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. God of majesty, mercy, and might, hear and heed our fervent prayers. For the church around the world, that the faith will be nourished by your presence in the world. For bishops, pastors, and deacons, that they may strengthen for their task of ministry, and for those who are providing the necessary technology for our worship at this time, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the earth that is saved from pollution and disregard, for endangered animals, that they and their habitats be protected, for scientists and their knowledge of your earth, that they will guide our society's choices, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great for peace throughout the world, for an end to terrorism and religious violence, for all elected leaders, that they serve the common good. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For the country's heart is hit by the coronavirus, for the fearful and the sick and their families, for medical personnel and the hospitals. Hear us, O oh God, 
your mercy is great. For all who are facing the criminal justice system, for those wrongly accused of crime, for those who are incarcerated, that they be kept safe. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those whose needs we know, for those whose needs are hidden, for all who are sick, for the hungry, for the dying, for those we name now here, for those recuperating at home, Sergio, Eric Sr., Cecilia, Robert, Alexa, Edna, Don, and Jason, those anticipating surgery, Bozina, those who are undergoing treatment, Lisa and Diane, those in hospice, Linda and Betty, those who are providing care, Suzanne, Sarah and June, and those in special need of prayer, Marta, NS, Cheryl, Louise and Linda, Izzy and her mother, Callum, Marianne, Bram, Joe, Vera, Roseanne, Doreen, Michael, Tracy, Jason, and Lynn. And remember those who have passed, Aaron, the cousin of Shannon. We pray for the congregation in our synod. We especially pray for Zion in Rahway, for St. Andrew in Parsippany, for Christ in Whiting. We pray for guidance and leadership of our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Tracy Bartholomew. We pray for the Synod staff as they support the congregations in our Synod and prepare for our Synod Assembly in May. And especially, we pray for those who have lost their life in Boulder, Colorado, in the recent shooting. And we continue to remember those who are suffering the loss in Atlanta. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Children of God, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace with God and one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. It is with joy and thanksgiving that we give thanks for what we have received from God, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Living Waters is a generous people, offering ourselves to God and neighbor, and with the church through all the ages, giving thanks for the saving love in Jesus. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life. With Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray with boldness and confidence in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And take with you this blessing as you journey on through the rest of Holy Week. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of our grace bless and keep you now and forever. 
Amen. Controversy over authority. Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem again. As Jesus was walking around the temple, the chief priests, legal experts, and elders came to him. They asked, what kind of authority do you have for doing these things? Who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I have a question for you. Give me an answer, then I'll tell you what kind of authority I have to do these things. Was John's baptism of heavenly or of human origin? Answer me. They argued among themselves. If we say it's of heavenly origin, he'll say, then why didn't you believe him? But we can't say it's of earthly origin. They said this because they were afraid of the crowd because they all thought John was a prophet. They answered Jesus, we don't know. Jesus replied, neither will I tell you what kind of authority I have to do these things. 